everyone, my name's Stacia and you're watching Torn Freak TV. Two weeks have come around fast and a lot of interesting stuff happened, so let's start with our traditional news about the Pirate Bay. In August, the Dutch anti-piracy outfit Brain took three Pirate Bay founders to court and won a case against them ordering to block Dutch users from accessing the website. As soon as the verdict was made public, the three defendants announced that they would appeal. Not long ago, the appeal was heard and the lawyer who represented the Pirate Bay defendants revealed that Brain brought in documents that were apparently faked in an attempt to mislead the court. The documents that Brain provided were about a Seychelles-based company, Reservella, which supposedly owns the Pirate Bay website. The first sign of the misleading information was the fact that the formation date of the company has the same date as the creation of the Pirate Bay domain, which makes no sense since Rezavella Company was founded less than a year ago. Also, the company ID, as it was reported in the document, is incorrect, and it also claims that one of the defendants, Frederick Nee, is a citizen of Seychelles. The former Pirate Bay spokesman, Peter Sunde, is outraged by Brain's actions and will press charges against Brain and its director, Tim Quick. The two creators of Kazal, which is now known as one of the most, if not the most hated peer-to-peer -peer digital media distribution application, are once again entering the music world. According to New York Times, they've created and financed a brand new secretive startup which has offices in Los Angeles and San Francisco. But there is no reason to worry that they are going to release a new version of Kazaa. According to the article, they are hoping to introduce a music subscription service by early next year that offers seamless access to music from both PCs and cell phones. The new product is registered as Audio. There are artists who hate everything with the word free attached to their names, and there are those like Edwin Collins. Fifteen years ago, Mr. Collins had a hit song called A Girl Like You. After all that time, Mr. Collins thought that it would have been a good idea to share the song for free on MySpace. However, this was easier said than done. Mr. Collins owns all the copyrights to his own music and all the licensing deals for the tracks have expired, but MySpace would not allow him to post the song. Grace Maxwell, his manager and wife, wrote in a blog post, I was told Edwin was attempting to breach a copyright and was sent to Orvillian MySpace copyright re-education page. Quite chilling, actually. I naturally blew my stack and wrote to MySpace on his behalf, demanding to know who the hell was claiming copyright of Edwin's track. It turned out that Warner Music was claiming the copyright on the song, and MySpace did not even bother to check that. Maxwell contacted Warner Music lawyers, and they assured her that they would resolve the issue. But months have passed, and MySpace is still not allowing the song to be uploaded. Until this is resolved, Mr. Collins can put this song on all peer-to-peer -peer networks. Voodoo is a brand new service created by the director of Steal This Film, which is helping independent filmmakers publish their film on peer-to-peer -peer websites and this way reach millions of viewers which they would not be able to otherwise. Voodoo has partnered up with big torrent websites such as the Pirate Bay, Mini Nova, and ISO Hunt, which promise to feature their movies on their websites. Voodoo works by publishing content to the websites and giving viewers the option to donating to the film creators directly. The first film has been released a few days ago and it's called Us Now. It is a documentary that looks at how user participation could transform the way countries are governed. The film is available for download now and you can see the short trailer at the end of this episode. Now let's take a look at our app review for this episode. I will actually not be the one talking this time, so say hi to my friend Catherine. Hi, my name is Catherine and I'm really happy to be able to tell you a little bit about what happened to me last week and why I decided to talk about this. I'm a college student and I live in a dorm where my school provides me with internet access. Two weeks ago, I was helping distribute the Torn Freak episode over peer-to-peer -peer networks and within hours my internet was blocked. I was soon told that my school does not allow any peer-to-peer -peer applications to run over the networks even if they are used for legal files. But since I feel it is my right to be able to distribute files that I have all the rights to, I had to find a different way. I remember I have registered for a virtual private network service via a service called iPredator and that I had an invite link somewhere in my inbox. I found it, paid 15 euros for a three month subscription and I tried using it. I had to say I was disappointed at first because the website took forever to load. I then went to Relax, which is a VPN service provided by the Swedish Pirate Party, which also costs 15 euros. But no matter which credit card I tried, it was always denied. It. For my last VPN, I decided to try a host in the US called VPN Gates. I had few issues logging in, but their customer service was amazing. 
and they were fast to answer all my emails. However, my connection would always drop when I tried to download a torrent. In the end, I decided to try iPredator again, and to my surprise, the website loaded just fine, and I was getting the same speed as I was without using it. So, my point is, if you have any issues or just wanted to hide your activities online, try one of these VPN services. Thank you very much, Catherine. In the last episode, I told you I would give away a free Torrent Free t-shirt to one of the people who follows me on Twitter. I've randomly chosen one of my followers, and I will send him a t-shirt. If you want a chance to win a t-shirt or you just want to comment on the show or ask questions, you can do so by following me on www.twitter.com slash TV. Thank you very much for tuning in and I will see you again in two weeks. And now please take a look at this trailer. Than ever in history and that that is still growing enormously. The contemporary internet and the tools that make it up give us an immense opportunity to reorganize almost any aspect of our own lives. So if you can create an encyclopedia with a million people who've never met, but the quality is just as good as Britannica, what else could you create? There is this possibility of using these tools to do massive things, which is completely unexplored at the moment. And we can work together in ways that ask a deeper question about the role of government. There's a whole new model that's emerging where we become part of the government. I think we've got the technology that any vote that's in Parliament could be offered to the entire country. This is a very profound change. I'm not talking about people lobbying outside parties influencing government. I'm talking about unbundling and reconstituting what is a government. Revolution doesn't happen when society adopts new tools. It happens when society adopts new behaviors.